Welcome to the Nosebleed Seats. This week on the Mad Conservative Crime Fighter, we're back at Harley Races World League Wrestling Academy in Troy, Missouri, as we covered the uh, grand opening that occurred a few weeks ago. And as you walk into the uh, Wrestling Academy, you see wrestling paraphernalia in the entryway of Harley Race. But to wrap up uh, the grand opening series, we're going to talk to the WLW Tag Team Champions, the Black Hand Warriors, and we're also going to talk to the WLW Heavyweight Champion, Elvis Alega. Talking to the World League Wrestling Tag Team Champions, uh, Black Hand Warriors, Dave DeLorean, and Michael uh, Magnuson. Magnuson. Trying to get everybody's names correct, <laughs> correct because there's a lot of new faces I have not uh, been able to uh, view in the ring before. But um, tell us how do you uh, got those tag titles. We beat uh, Rope and Wrangle in August in Lynn, Missouri. Clean in the middle of the ring, I might add. Rope and Wrangle consists of? Chris Wallace and uh, Britton Tucker. Yep. Britton Tucker. Um, Tell us about yourselves, um, how, uh, when you uh, began uh, your uh, ring career. Uh, I started last December uh, in Richmond, Missouri, I believe was my first match, and it was a tag match with Michael Magnuson. I, I wore a mask, I was formerly known as Dark Shadows, and now I am Dave DeLorean. And if you watch the WLW YouTube page, you'll be able to go back and see the match and see just what happened, how I got unmasked, and, and that how that transpired. I'm Michael Magnuson, and I started in September of 2012, also in Richmond. Um, I've never worn a mask. Uh, started teaming with DeLorean here in December, and we've just been running roughshod all over the tag teams in the Midwest. Kicking ass and taking names. Oh, can, is this can we cuss? I'll bleep it, don't worry. <laughs> it's gonna bleep her. Um, you wore a mask, now what made you decide you wanted to make your debut in the ring under a mask? Um, well, I was actually working with Jack Gamble and John Webb in Highland Winter Prize without the mask as Dave DeLorean. And I was working with previous to Leland Race, Jason Jones and Michael Magnuson with the Black Hand Warriors. So I was playing both sides of the field knowing that sooner or later it would pay off. And it did. So you're wanting to do um, double duty uh, at wrestling events, wrestle with a mask and wrestle without. Yeah. And yeah, play two, diff two different personas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Now how did you... I want the risk of somebody wearing the mask and wrestling without the mask. Um, how, how do you avoid injury in match one so you're fresh to do match two as your other persona? Uh, well, I don't think there's any real strategy to it, you know, just uh, kind of banking on luck, I guess. I mean, you know, uh, one of the personas I would wear a, you know, a top, I would be fully covered, you know, arms covered legs covered and the other I would wear like you know biker shorts so I'd be somewhat exposed you know so if I was wrestling before without without the shirt and the pants and everything if I got bruised up and everything well I just wear that shirt but if I wrestled with the shirt first you know nobody knew the difference they probably just thought maybe I wrestled the night before or, or whatever. So. Magnuson, did I describe uh, your character? Uh, Michael Magnuson just is a real uh, rough attitude. Um, the Black Hand Warriors actually, uh, we started off very, very rough around the edges. Um, lately, we've been accepting applications for if anyone were to like to join the Black Hand Warriors, they can go find the link on our Facebook fan yes, page. like us on Facebook, Black Hand Warriors. And our tagline actually is, we are better than you, 
but we don't have to be. Okay, is it? Because I think I did. And hence the application. Yes. So if you if you uh, submit the application and we accept, which probably isn't going to happen, but if you were to accept, you know, then you would be one of us, and we wouldn't be better than you. Either, so. so it's not a fan club you're trying to do. You're trying to create a full blown stable, apart from the tag team. You could say that, yeah. If if the right candidate came along, yeah. Mm -hmm. How big of a stable you want to assemble? Uh, there's no real number or anything. No. Just, if the right person comes along, I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say more than five, probably. Describe your debut match. Ah, uh, interesting. Uh, we actually went up against Elvis Aliaga, the current World League Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, and. Uh, Ryan Drago, who is now signed to WWE, so uh, it was it was definitely an experience, you know, with those guys though being, you know, wrestling for quite a while, you know, we were in good hands, so 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 interesting. That's how I describe it. Uh, my first match was myself, uh, the former Jason Jones and Mark Sterling versus uh, High Level Enterprise Jack Gamble and John Webb and uh, Chris Wallace and uh, I guess you could say being a rookie as I was uh, they got the better of me but um, I'd say in, in, in the long run our most recent title defense was against HLE so I would say I've gotten a lot better since then. Yeah. Describe some of the opponents you've, or some of the matches you've had. Um, you've only been at it a year and a half thus far. Um, me personally, or you want to take this one first? It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Uh, I pretty much wrestled everybody on the uh, WLW roster, you know, um, except for, I don't think I've ever wrestled Elvis Aliaga in a singles. Um, and I don't know. Oh, actually, I have wrestled Jason too, or Leland, excuse me. And uh, and then outside of worldly wrestling, not a whole lot. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I wrestled uh, Shorty Biggs and Evan Money, Evan Money Morris, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then last week for NWA Central States, I wrestled Evan Morris again for uh, the Affliction Heavyweight Championship. So, is there equivalent to a television title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I lost that one, but uh, that's pretty much pretty much all I can think of right off the top of my head. So um, I also have wrestled just about everyone on the WLW roster, and recently we've been expanding, going to MMWA, uh, Dynamo Pro, uh, NWA, CCW and uh, even worked a show for uh, SICW and um, wrestled all sorts of different guys, all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, it's nothing but experience. Yep. Now, um, looking to go further out, you primarily wrestle for World League, but apart from the recent matches outside of uh, WLW, like Southern uh, Illinois, Central Illinois, yeah. Chicago. <laughs> uh, man, we'll go anywhere, really. You yeah. know, if anybody, if anybody will have us, we'll go there. You know, uh, we're we're really wanting to get more experience and get our name out there, and we'll 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 do what go wherever we have to. You know, as long as um, the business end is there. You know, so now the top tag team in Central Illinois and well, M M. MWR has given them the Tech Team of the Year award a few times. Mason, Devin Cutter, the Hooligans, they've got three sets of tag belts. You have one set of tag belts. Uh, how would you approach a match with the Hooligans if you know who they are? Yeah, I know who they are. Uh, I've, I've seen them on the MWR website and um, I've watched, I think I've watched a couple of their YouTube matches or matches on YouTube. Um, and you know, I'd, I'd say I'd approach them just like we approach everybody else, you know. Every time every time we step in that ring, we we go to war and we do whatever we have to to win matches. So, you know, that's what we're about, winning matches. Yep. Any thoughts? Um, well, to put my own personal spin on that, uh, it doesn't matter who it is. 
It could be the Hooligans with their three sets of tag titles. It could be HLE. It could be Stash and Burns, the former WLW tag champions. It could be Shorty Biggs and Outcast, the Dynamo tag champions. The Black Hand Warriors are running through everybody. Yep. And we talked to Jack Gamble earlier about the uh, the horrific accident. Um, I don't know if you have anything more you want to add to uh, that story. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't really know what to say there. Uh, I was in that wreck too, and you know it was a really bad deal. And I don't whether I like Jack Gamble or not. It doesn't matter. You know, uh, I don't feel comfortable talking about that that situation you know because there were there were there were lives involved and and it was much more than wrestling at that time so and you came back rather quickly yeah yeah uh, I believe I was out for like three months I actually didn't miss any shows that I was booked for or anything I just had a, a wrist injury which is it's still healing but it's it's pretty good I can I can still wrestle and everything so were you wrestling without the mask at the time uh, in some of the time yeah, yeah. I was, at that time, I was wrestling with and without the mask. Sometimes on the same show, but uh, not very often. Mainly with the mask. All right. Goals for 2014. Goals for 2014. Mike first. <laughs> uh, I would have to say goals for 2014 are to continue to expand our horizons, uh, work as many companies as we can, and uh, dominate the tag team division in all these all the companies that we work yep yeah uh pretty much what mag said uh and and on top of all that give entertaining matches you know uh you don't have to like us it doesn't matter if you like us or you don't when you see what we do in the ring you will you, you you'll be entertained i mean there's no way no way around it so Where could promoters go if they want to bring in the black hand warriors probably to the facebook page yep the, Mess messages on there. Yep, the Black Hand Warriors. Just search. I, I, I'm not sure what the the uh, web address is, but if you search the there, it is. Right, look at that. Look, oh, look right, right below there. you. Right below the bottom of the screen. There right it is. There, there it is. Right it just there. popped up out of nowhere. Right, the magic awesome. of television, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Dave DeLoren and Michael Magnuson. Uh, thank you for uh, talking to us today. Yeah. Thanks for having thanks. us, man. All right. come true for everybody's favorite intergender wrestling champion of the world, Andy Kaufman. With your teamwork, we can reward Andy with the 2014 WWE Hall of Fame Inductee Award. I'll drive the point home with hashtag AK for WWEHOF2014. Email that to your friends and family. Also tweet at WWE at WWE Universe and at Jerry Lawler and tell them how badly and how much we want Andy in the Hall of Fame. Hashtag AK4, that's the number four, WWE HOF2014.
2014. Hashtag AK4 WWE HOF 2014. Post it on your Facebook, your Tumblr, your Reddit, your Stumble Upon, your YouTube, forums, blogs, podcasts, spray painted on the side of large abandoned industrial facilities. Put it anywhere and everywhere. Hashtag AK4 WWE HOF 2014. Sponsored by Andy's Army. And be sure to like our Facebook page, Induct Andy Kaufman. This weekend, we're going to begin handing out the uh, 2014 NBS Awards. We started out in Dreamwave, and then we will make our way across uh, Central Illinois, hitting uh, 01 in Champaign, possibly uh, UWC in Georgetown, and Pro Wrestling Glory in Moroa as we uh, take a look at some of the posters that are on the wall from Japan. WLW is partnered with Pro Wrestling Noah, and you see uh, portraits of uh, some of the Japanese superstars that uh, WLW wrestlers have had action with and have come out to uh, the Harley Races uh, training camps that were held here in the state of Missouri. As you see, the uh, G. HC Heavyweight Championship. Many uh, events featured World League wrestlers and several of them have made their way across the Pacific to uh, wrestle in uh, the United States. But to close out our series on the uh, WLW Grand Opening Series, we uh, present this interview with the World League Wrestling Heavyweight Champion close out the, this edition of the Nosebleed Seats. We're talking to the World League Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Elvis Aliaga. And um, where are you from? Uh, I hail from yeah. the islands of the Philippines. And uh, how long have you been an active wrestler? Uh, going on a little over two years. I started in January of 2012 here at the Harley Race Wrestling Academy, and I wound up having my first match in uh, March of 2012. So you've only been at it for a little bit more than a year. Uh, yes, just a little bit, yeah. This would be closing in on your sophomore year. Um, what got you interested in becoming a professional wrestler? Uh, you know, I was just a fan, just like a lot of other wrestlers, uh, just a fan growing up. and. Since probably about the age of 12, I've I knew that this is where where I wanted to be and what I wanted to be doing. Uh, of course, first I went and got my education, I went to college, but I, always in the back of my head I knew that this is something I, that I was at least gonna gonna try taking a stab at. And so here I am. So you moved over here from the Philippines, or were you? Uh, well, I I have relatives that uh, live in the Philippines originally. I'm from Nebraska, uh, but my mother is from the Philippines, so... Des okay. Cool. Uh, describe, um, you won the title recently, uh, who did you defeat for that belt, and uh, describe the match. Uh, I wound up having to wrestle two matches uh, in one night to win this bad boy. Uh, I defeated John Webb first. And then I had to go through Leland Race uh, to actually win the belt. The, it was vacant at the time. Uh, and, you know, Leland gave me a run for my money, but in the end, I took care of business. And I, that was way back in uh, September, so still your WLW champions. That was a little bit of a funny situation because um, Leland Race underwent a name change and he was the champion at the time so technically you won the belt from him but technically yeah it was it was a weird situation but I... he wanted to vacate the belt and uh, I guess pretend that he was a completely new guy or uh, what I, I guess I, I don't know I guess I guess that's what he wanted to do but I all Hopefully. that matters is now I have the belt so um, who have you defended it against so far uh, so far, I've defended it against uh, Brian Breaker. Uh, I've actually defended it against him uh, twice. He, uh, as a lot of people know, he was 
signed by WWE and he was uh, working down in uh, developmental as Brandon Traven. But uh, yeah, now he's back wrestling, back for his roots, Harley. I think he's wrestling down in Oklahoma. Really tough competitor. I, I can't say enough good things about him. I mean, he he really, he too gave me a run for my money. And But still, your champion, El Vasaliaga. Uh, and also, uh, defended it just recently against uh, Jake Durden over at Dynamo Pro. So a lot of exciting uh, matches, and hopefully a lot more to come. Um. Well, when, now that match was, um, was that tile for tile because he's the Dynamo Pro Heavyweight Champion? No, it, no, I take that back. No, it wasn't uh, title for title. It was, his title was on the line, but uh, I brought my belt along with me too, just to show off. Who was your first match against? You've only oh. been at for a little, getting closing down in two years. Yeah, my first match, I'll never forget it, was against superstar Steve Fender. And... Uh, I didn't know it until maybe a few days prior to that that I was going to be wrestling him and I had never met him prior to that night but it, I was full of nerves and you know, I got through it and uh, it was a lot of fun I'm glad that he was he was my first opponent because you know the guy's had a lot of experience he's been over to Japan He's wrestled for Harley for a number of years. And to be able to face him in my first match, I, uh, not too many people can probably say that. Where have you wrestled thus far promotions uh, in your two years? Uh, so far, I've wrestled primarily for uh, World League, for Harley. Uh, I'm just now starting to get branch out a little bit more. Uh, I've wrestled for Metro Pro, uh, Dynamo Pro. <laughs> Uh, and just recently, I uh, wrestled over at uh, NWA Central States. Um, other than that, though, but I'm looking to start venturing into some other promotions. So, favorite match thus far? Is it the title win or oh, something else? That's a tough one. I, there's so many that I, I could choose from. I mean. Uh, Probably winning the title uh, against Leland, but uh, a close second would have to be winning the tag titles with uh, Ryan Drago, who uh, now is actually down in developmental wrestling with Simon Gotch. Uh, act we actually defeated the High Level Enterprise that night for the tag titles in Springfield. That was that was my first taste of gold, if you will. So, what moment in wrestling? <laughs> What was your worst experience in wrestling thus far that you'd rather forget ever ever happened? Oh. If there is any. Um, I mean, overall, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't, my memories so far have been good. I cross my fingers that, you know, I, I haven't really had too many bad experiences so far that I can think of. Um. Anybody that you like to wrestle that you haven't got a chance to? Um, Anybody in the Midwest? Everybody's going to go with a national person. <laughs> no, no kidding. Uh, gosh, that I haven't got to wrestle at all? Right. I don't know. I would I would have said Jake Durden, but that's already happened. Uh, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. I, I, I know I'd like to, I've already wrestled him before, but I haven't wrestled him for the title. I know I'd like to uh, wrestle Jack Gamble again, maybe with the title on the line. I know he's got his, uh, he's more eye in his sights on uh, the tag titles with with John Webb and whatnot, but you know, maybe someday we can go one-on-one -on -one for, for my title. Goals for 2014? Uh, you know, I guess just, Keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, keep working hard. Uh, hopefully, hold on to this. You know, do what I always do. Take Add care, belts. Take care of business. Add belts. Uh, sure. Second, why not? third, fourth. Of course. <laughs> of course. All right. Uh, where can promoters go if they want to bring in? Um... Actually, I better ask this question since you share the name. 
with uh, Presley. Mm -hmm. Do you do any singing? Oh, uh, in the car, in the shower, you know, nothing, nothing too extra extravagant. But I mean, obviously, uh, Elvis Presley was—he's a huge, significant idol of mine. You know, I don't, I don't think you could pick a more charismatic uh, singer. You know, he was such a groundbreaker, and you know, hopefully, I can bring a little bit of what he had to wrestling kind of keep his his spirit i guess if you will alive do you get any teasing for her sharing the name or having the name elvis and sharing it with presley uh when you were growing up no no uh but i mean at shows and uh, i'll hear it all the time you know oh man elvis has left the building and uh, all, he's all shook up and all, all this and whatnot and you know i I don't know. I, I'll take it as a compliment. I, All right. Where can promoters go if they want to bring in um, Ellis? You're going to have to pronounce your last name again because I can't pronounce it. For uh, If promoters want to book me, Elvis Aliaga. Aliaga. There yes. you go. Uh, you can look me up on Facebook, uh, the Elvis Aliaga Facebook fan book page. Or uh, also, on tw I'm on Twitter, at Elvis Aliaga WLW. And also, uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, that's also Elvis Aliaga, WLW. All right, Elvis, you're about to leave the building. So <laughs> thank you for talking to us. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. All right. That'll do it for our series on the grand opening of WLW in Troy, Missouri. Next week, we're going to return to action in the ring. So until then, this is Mac Server Crime Fighter. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, the 7th Annual NBS Awards begins this March, and tonight we announce our first induction for 2014 to the Central Illinois Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. A Midwestern superstar and a charter member of the A-List, the firebrand Jason Hades will be inducted on March 1st at Dreamwave Wrestling's Misfortune by his manager, Rylan Fox. It all takes place at Dreamwave Wrestling in LaSalle, Illinois at the Knights of Columbus Hall at 209 Gooding Street. Tickets are now available online at dreamwavewrestling.com and also like them on facebook.com at Dreamwave Wrestling. Be sure to join us March the 1st for Misfortune as we honor a former multi-time IWA Mid-South Light Heavyweight and Dreamwave Heavyweight Champion for the Class of 2014. Catch the Nosebleed Seats TV on demand anytime. Just go to stlwc.lip.tv, select your episode, watch and enjoy the show. The MBS TV on stlwc.lip.tv. The newest tag team in local area wrestling coverage has arrived. The St. Louis Wrestling Community, covering downstate Illinois and Missouri for the past five years, teams up with the new Central Illinois Pro Wrestling.com, presented by the Nosebleed Seats. They bring you the latest news and information, schedule of events, interviews, and wrestling action. Check it out now at Central Illinois Pro Wrestling.com and STLWrestling.lifejournal.com.